Peace and blessings, family. This is your brother Asar Imhotep with the Madhu Andela Institute for the Advancement of Science and Culture. And today is Sunday, October the 25th. And today's lecture, this is part one of a two-part lecture on the Chiana Intu religious foundation in something which I call Kimoyo. And we will discuss the relationship between the name of deity in the Congo called Kalunga and the name of a deity Ma'at in ancient Egypt. And to demonstrate that they are one and the same as well as vital to the understanding of what I call Kimoyo in general, speaking on African uh, religious concepts. And so all that and more when we return in just a second. back. Thank you for joining us and uh, we will get started briefly. I just want to uh, reiterate that the lecture today is part one of a two-part series. So uh, it is titled Shin Into Religious Foundation, Kalunga and Ma'at. And for those that may be familiar with my work, you've known that I have been promoting this term, which I borrow from the Bakongo people, called Kimoyo, which is the art and way of vitality. And I use it to describe the majority of African uh, religious and wisdom traditions. And so I am going to discuss the foundation of Kimoyo and how everything else emerges from these fundamental concepts. And in that process, I created a cosmogram inspired, of course, by the cosmograms coming out of the Bakongo, as you can see in a variety of work like uh, Dr. Kimwa Dende Kia Bonseki Fukiao or Robert Ferris Thompson, for example. And, you know, we'll get more into that in a bit. And we will also discuss the relationship between Kalunga and Ma'at and how that understanding will be critical to the concept of Kimoyo. So without further ado, I will get started. So I will just go to the first slide. And just to kind of reiterate our objectives here. Objective one is to explore the foundational paradigm that undergirds the spiritual traditions of Bukanda. And, you know, for those who may not be familiar, I have renamed Africa uh, Bukanda. And my justification is found in Aluja volume two. Uh, China into religion and philosophy, which was released in January of this year, 2020. So, uh, and dealing with the etymology of the word Kemet in that chapter, chapter seven, I believe. So, uh, let me start over. To explore the foundational paradigm that undergirds the spiritual traditions of Bukanda in general and the China into language family in particular. 
and Shina Intu means into family. And this is the name that I gave the Negro Egyptian language family that started from Dr. Teal Falubinga uh, in his 1993 work. And so, you know, I've done plenty of uh, shows dealing with that as well as, of course, it is discussed in Aluja Volume 2. So you want to know more about Chena Into, uh, go to that, uh, that text. Secondly, to demonstrate that the Congo word and concept of God, Kalunga, is cognate with Ma'at in ancient Egypt. To provide and explain a graphical representation of the two concepts within the context of Kimoyo, Bukanda religion and philosophy. And lastly, to demonstrate how paronymy plays an important role in the creation of Bukanda motifs, ritual, and philosophy. For those who are unfamiliar with paronymy, paronymy is a linguistic term that refers to the way in which a population or a group of speakers synthesize words that appear to sound alike. And so the idea is that words that sound alike must necessarily in the eyes of, you know, just indigenous uh, or, or the lay population, the idea is that these two or more concepts belong together. And it is that belief that these two homonyms uh, or homographs may uh, be related that inspires a lot of cultural rituals, motifs, and even mythology. And so we'll see how this plays out in the, the work of Dr. Fukiao, as well as in ancient Kemet regarding Ma'at. And so this is the graphic that I created, you know, to kind of let us know, you know, uh, how certain concepts work in my idea of Kimoyo. And so, you know, these component parts will be explained more in full, but you know, for those who are familiar with Congo cosmographs, you know that this is a representation of what we call the Dikinga. And, you know, it is, you know, slightly altered. I have kind of mixed certain concepts together between the Congo uh, graphs as, and the hieroglyphs coming from ancient Kemet. And so you'll see here in the left-hand corner that I have the word Kalunga, which is one of the names of deity or, or God in the you know, Central and, and East African Bantu speakers. And so you see that there's an arrow pointing to the big circle here, to the Kinga. And um, so what I'm arguing is that this entirety is representative of Kalunga. And it'll make more sense a little later. And that you'll see that there's an arrow pointing down and up between Kalunga and the goddess Ma'at. And so uh, the Kalunga is defined as partly a, a principle of welded opposite forces positive and negative in one. And then I have defined ma'at in this respect as open-hearted sharing. And we'll see why this is the case. And I, in chapter one of Aluja volume two, I do the entire breakdown and etymology of ma'at. And if you have read that text, you will know that, you know, we say ma'at, but it was not pronounced that way. This is, these are four consonants. And so this is an M, an R, a type of K sound, and or H type sound, and T. So it's really like merchit or merchit, something along those lines. 
And so we know that the ancient Egyptians did not write out their vowels. So, you know, we are just left with the consonantal skeletons. And so this is uh, how we say here. And so there's a prefix and then there's a, 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 an essential suffix, which I, I have in the black here. The root of the word ma'at is this rech, rechi, right here. And this is what is cognate with the lunga in the word kalunga. And we'll see how that plays out. And so we see here the, the cosmogram. And again, I'll get into more details about this, but we're, we're gonna talk about how the principle of Ngolo and Moyo uh, are vital to the art of dynamo vitalism. In other words, Kimoyo. And, you know, for those who are familiar with ancient Egyptian motifs, we see here the, the deity or the Netcher, uh, that is known as Keper or Keper Rock, as we see the sun in his hand. And in Chiluba, it is pronounced Chipepula. And that is discussed in a number of my texts, as well as Dr. Mubabingi Bololo's uh, text. And so uh, you'll see the, uh, the references and arguments for that. And so um, as, as well, you can see these other hieroglyphic signs. This is the Unk symbol, and this is the symbol for deity in Eluja volume two. I also discuss how the word for nature is also the word for Ngolo in Kikongo. And so uh, even though this word Moyo is not cognate with the word Unk in ancient Egyptian, they're, they're functionally the same concept. So that's why I, I have the ancient Egyptian symbol here. And then we have this symbol of you know, the snake uh, to represent change and, and forward movement, um, as well as, you know, the positive and negative forces within the Kalunga uh, in the process of Dingo Dingo or Dikinga, and uh, also to mark the, the types of change, you know, uh, negative, this is the dying, birth positive, you know, dying and birth positive in the underworld. So we'll get into a little bit of that. We won't get into the entire Congo cosmology as that is a lecture unto itself, but we'll get just enough to, to you know, help us to understand this principle of Kimoyo. So, <laughs> oops, it went on. so let me continue. And so, you know, the... The work of Dr. Fukiao has inspired, you know, me to do some serious comparisons between the ancient Egyptian civilization, language and culture and that of ancient Egypt. And there have been other scholars who have, you know, done that work as well. And, you know, either in even some European Egyptologists have recognized the the value in in looking into Bantu languages and cultures when trying to understand ancient Kemet. And so, um, what we see in front of us is a citation from an Egyptologist by the name of uh, Serge Sonoran, and he, in his text, the the Priest of Ancient Egypt, he states. Thus, the revelations of Ogotomeli, you know, of the Dogon, or of Bantu philosophy, turn out to contribute precious information which helps us better understand certain aspects of Egyptian religious thought. But in this connection, there is little, if anything, we can expect from a reading of Plato, in other words, Greek thought. And so it's interesting that you know, at this date in 1957, that this, you know, European scholar would recognize that, you know, uh, by understanding Dogon thought and Bantu philosophy, that that will, you know, provide us with some jewels in order to better understand ancient Kemet. And so this kind of reinforced some, you know, the, the, the trajectory that I have been on since, you know, the publication 
uh, in 2001 of African Cosmology of the Bantu Congo. So we'll continue. And speaking of, this is the late Dr. Kimwa Dinde Kiabonseki Fukiao from Maniaga, Congo. And he has written several texts that were published in English and, and a lot of some other texts that were written in French, but were never, you know, published that, you know, hopefully in the near future, we can probably get copies of those uh, made to the public. But, you know, he died in 2013 on November the 29th. And so, you know, uh, he has been a great inspiration to me and I've had the opportunity to converse with him, uh, you know, before he, he passed and you know get some more clarity and additional teachings from him uh you know uh, in and via our communications and so but the 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 most inspirational text for me of his is african cosmology of the bantu congo and you know when i first saw this text when I first read this text, I was introduced to this text by the late Dr. Asa Hilliard III, who came to, you know, Texas Southern University to give a lecture. And when this version of the book came out in 2001, you know, he he provided some excerpts from it. And so uh, I found it very interesting what he cited, and I went ahead and bought the text. And when I, you know, read through the text, I noticed that there were a lot of commonalities with ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet. And so, you know, I had not built up the skill set yet to be able to argue definitively on my intuition, but that those skill sets developed as the years came by. And now I'm able to more definitively talk about the relationships between Congo and ancient Egyptian thought and philosophy. And, you know, this is just one aspect of, you know, that this, this larger conversation uh, for which I argue, of course, that the ancient Egyptian society was essentially a Bantu society. So when you're reading ancient Egyptian texts and you're looking at their religious traditions, it is my argument that that, religious and cultural and ritual tradition belongs to the Bantu, belongs inside the Bantu universe. And so, um, and so that's kind of what I discuss in Aluja Volume 2. But now we're going to read from, you know, some excerpts from the African cosmology of the Bantu Congo. Now, what we're going to read is Fukial's telling of the indigenous Bokongo cosmogony, origin of the universe. And this is going to be essential to this notion of Kimoyo, which we will, you know, get into more depth a little later. So, you know, everything is built off the cosmological foundation. And from there, we will under we will better understand the purpose and the role of Kimoyo to African culture and what essentially defines and separates these indigenous Bukanda or African traditions from the Abrahamic faiths or ideas that we may find in Eastern Asia or in you know uh, Northern Europe or the like. So I will continue. <laughs> so uh, the what I'm going to be reading from is going to be essentially pages 17 through 22 of Fukiao's 2001 work, African Cosmology of the Bantu Congo. And so he starts off, you know, with these graphics. And so we'll see the graphics next. But uh, this will make sense, you know, uh, when, when you see the graphics. He says a straight line skyline in Longa, Lukongolo, or a line with an empty circle in Bungi, 
in its middle is among the Bantu Congo, the symbol of emptiness, a world without visible life. That is the emptiness, the Mbongi, Mwasi or Mpamba. The world in its beginning was empty. It was an Mbongi, an empty thing, a cavity without visible life. Now you're gonna see me bold a few words um, and then you're gonna see some bolded words that are highlighted well, certain letters or, or phonemes are highlighted in or in red, um, and and that is purposeful because you know uh, we're going to get a lesson in historical comparative linguistics, and the, this consonant sequence is going to be very important when we're comparing the Kikongo terms with that of ancient Kemet, and so. Uh, we'll see just how so in a little bit. But this is the graphic, the first graphic, figure one. And so he says an Mbongi, which is an empty circle. But sometimes you'll see the Mbongi or the, the, the cosmographs as seen um, in a kind of square or rectangle. And, said, and also you saw that word in longa, which means line. And so there's a dividing line here. And we'll see that, you know, this dividing line will separate the kind of quantum spiritual world at, that is located at the bottom, as we see here, and the physical world, which is, is represented on, on top of here. And so, you know, as, as he stated, in the Mbongi, there was there's, uh, this emptiness and the world in its beginning was empty. It was an embongi and an empty thing, a cavity without visible life. So that's why you don't see anything right here. But he continues. There are in, there are in the empty embongi, embongi. And I think this was a mistake in Fukial's text because uh, the word embongi means something different. But I think he meant this word here, embongi, in terms of the empty circle. There are in the empty Mbongi, active forces that can blow up. Mu Mbongi, Yampa Mba, Muena Ogoto, Zilinda, Kuhuka, Kadi Zinamoyo. Where there is emptiness and nothingness, act other unknown forces, invisible, of course. So inside that empty Mbongi is not really empty. You know, it's just latent forces that that are ready to to activate and and create phenomena and so that's what he's saying here man's life is surrounded by diverse forces and waves which govern it like an embonki and we continue so now you you see that empty embonki the the empty uh, what was empty before is now starting to uh, emerge, you know, saying phenomena, and we'll get into what we're seeing here, because it's going to be like a fire force and, and kind of a mountain, you know, over the, on the physical side and the spiritual side uh, of the equation. But, you know, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves right here. So now we get into the meat of this thing. A fire force complete by itself, Kanunga, emerged within the Mbongi the emptiness, nothingness, and became the source of life, moyo, wawo mu inza. And so that word moyo, again, is a word for life on earth. And the word for earth is inza. That is, the kalunga, the complete force by itself, fired up the mbongi and overran, dominated it. The heated force of kalunga blew up and down as a huge uh, storm of projectiles, Kimboadinde, which is the first name of, or at least his initiatic name of, you know, Dr. Fukiao, producing a huge mass infusion. Kalunga then became the symbol of force, vitality, and more, a process and principle of change, all changes on the earth. And by cooling, the mass infusion solidified itself and gave birth to the earth. In the process of cooling, the matter infusion produced water, 
whose rivers, mountains, etc., are the results. And so there's a lot to take in here, but I want y'all to pay attention. Remember that word parenemy that I mentioned earlier and that dealing with the belief by a, a lay population that two or more words that sound alike must necessarily be related. And because of that belief, they in turn synthesize the meanings of these words that could have come from a common root, but could also just be a homonym in the language. And so they, they synthesize, they connect those, those two or more concepts, and then it becomes the inspiration for cultural motifs, mythology, you know, philosophy, and religion. And so we're seeing how this actually plays out in the Congo tradition. And so Kalunga here is associated with, you know, um, it is this labeled as, you know, complete, it's a complete force. But then that Kalunga is also associated with fire. And it became a symbol of force, vitality, and more, a process and principle of change. And so Kalunga also has to deal with change. And, you know, we'll see that this word also is a word for ocean or water. And so, so now we see this graphic figure three, where, you know, as I mentioned before, the dividing line, which is also called Kalunga, but remember there's a word in Longa that literally means line, but the word Kalunga means ocean, and this is supposed to represent this kind of uh, ocean or, or dividing line between the non-physical world and the physical world. And so because Kalunga emerged, and this is what you see here in the center, this fire force, you know, um, and this emerged and began a creative process, which gave us the stars, planets, and of course the earth, you know, which is, which is here. And so we'll continue. Now the word, za, became a physical reality floating in Kalunga. So this is what you see here, that, that the world is floating in this, this ocean, this cosmic ocean, you know, also called Kalunga. Became a physical reality floating in Kalunga in the endless water within the cosmic space half emerging for terrestrial life and half submerging for sub submarine life in the spiritual world. The Kalunga, also meaning ocean, is a door and a wall between those two worlds. Kalunga became also the idea of immensity that one cannot measure. So it's an, uh, it is a vastness, an infiniteness unto itself. An exit and entrance, a source and origin of life, potentialities, the principal God of change. That's why, you know, we have that that symbol of Keper, because Keper is the God of change in the ancient Egyptian language. Um, the force that continually generates. Because Kalunga was the complete life, everything in in touch with the earth shared that life and became life after itself. That life appeared on the earth under all kinds of sizes and forms, planes, insects, animals, rocks, human beings, etc. The number of infinite mass and fusion particles that remain hanging in the upper space constituted what are known in human languages as sun, moon, stars, which are in realities of the worlds Man is called to live in certain of those worlds, too. Kalunga, the principal god of change, is a force in motion. And because of that, our earth and everything in it is in perpetual motion. Man himself is an object in motion, for he is an around-the-path goer in his upper and lower world. And so we're, we're seeing here that, you know, that this, this, this empty space inside of it had all of these forces, which itself is Kalunga. 
And then there was a spark in Kalunga that that initiated a series, an infinite series of interactions of, of matter that produced the phenomena in essentially existence in the universe itself. And since Kalunga is the completely complete being, and he is the manifestation of these uh, potentialities and manifestations, everything is a manifestation of Kalunga itself. So that's why you saw in my graphic that the, the word Kalunga was pointing to the very circle which represented the, the infinite uh, existence in universe. And so everything exists with inside the Kalunga itself. And so, you know, more clarity in, in just a bit. So we, we, there were some key words some key terms that we, uh, you know, should keep in mind. So we have Elonga, line, and Bongi, the empty circle. And, you know, I have another lecture where I go into the cognates for Mbongi and, and to show how that, you know, plays in the ancient Egyptian, you know, cosmology. But we don't have time for that today. So we have Kalunga, the fire force. We also have Kalunga, the completely complete being. Kalunga, ocean waters. And then Kalunga, the principal god of change and transformation. So how does Kalunga essentially mean all of these different things? And there's some more attributes of Kalunga, which we will discuss later on. And so, and notice the, the what I have bolded in red, it's the same consonant sequence in Ilmonga and in Kalunga. And so remember that Kalunga is also that dividing line itself. And this is not a coincidence because this is paronymy at play. So let's continue. So the reason why these particular, you know, ideas are associated with Kalunga is because there are different words in the language for the root of Kalunga, which is Lunga. And so we can look at this one dictionary, dictionary and grammar of Congo language from 1887, and you'll see that this will begin to make sense. So we have a word lunga, which means to come to, to amount to, to be complete in number and quantity, to be exact, just, accurate, right, perfect, expire, fulfilled, legally right, all come, all to hand, all present. This word is also used of the triumph of might over right, so that the other, so that to overcome or conquer in a fight is spoken of as lunga, whether the right was on the winning side or hence to win, to prove oneself right in a palaver, master to overcome, to beat, to defeat, and and there's a word lungisa justification. So you, for those who are familiar with the concept of maat, you already see where the word ma'at and the word lunga, you know, match in terms of this, this, this meaning for, you know, ma'at being the word for justification to be just accurate, true, you know, balance, harmony, reciprocity, et cetera. We'll get more into that. And so lunga, perfect and complete. That's why kalunga is the completely complete being. Because there's a root lunga in Kikongo, which means to be complete, perfect. And so you also have a root lunga to mind, to take care of, to keep, to watch, to look after, to protect or guard. And then you have lunga, a smithy, a forge, foundry, a gale, blast, a strong wind. And so in, in many African traditions, the, the concept of wind is the, the personification of the principle of change. So like for those familiar with the Yoruba tradition, you know that that principle of change is represented by the goddess Oya, who is the wind. And, and this is connected, of course, to the fire force. So a smithy, a forge. So that's why, you know, you have in the center of the Mbongi, of the Dikinga, the, the fire force, the smithy, because 
And that's where everything else was being cooked. And which gave birth to the to the universe and the planets and the stars that we saw. Then you have this other word, Lunga La Kesa, to assemble, to gather together, Lungana, to gather together to assemble. And and essentially this word, there's a, a in Bantu in general, there's a the, the root is simply Lunga. And it's this bringing together that is that is used for words for creation. And then you have Lungalala, to be wary, cautious, prudent, skillful, far-seeing, discreet, judicious, shrewd, sly, cunning, crafty, prudence, discretion, wisdom, shrewdness, skillfulness. Then you have Lungulua, to fill, to overflowing, heap up, put plenty, put much, many, a mass, pour out in abundance. So remember that Kalunga also became the, the personification of an immensity, a vastness, an infinite vastness. That's because you have a, a root, Lungula, uh, Lungulua, uh, from Lunga, meaning to fill, to overflowing, many, to amass. You know, it is just, it is, it is a word dealing with an abundance, put plenty, put much. And then we have Kalunga, meaning ocean. And so there's an, another root in the language, Langu, which means water. And so I, I hope you see, you know, how all of this is going. And then again, the word Lunga, meaning to light a or to make or blow a fire. So this word is connected to this word for a smithy or a forge. But you can see why the Kalunga is the fire force and principle of change. So that's why I have all this stuff highlighted in the red. So, you know, it is because of these very different words. These are etymologically, in many of these cases, different words. But because in the Kikongo language, these sound alike, the, the early Bakongo theologians and philosophers synthesized all of this. And, and this synthesis emerged as the the Congo cosmology which we just read in part and there's more to the cosmology but that's you know again it, it that is its own study and so you know hopefully this is making sense to you as you are you know viewing this so you know the word lunga dealing with fire and ocean and completeness immensity so where from master and spirit to to order and and um, as protector and transformation, all of these different words and meanings are synthesized together as this uh, this this concept called Kalunga, you know, which is defined as God itself. And so it's an amalgamation, it's a stacking of concepts. That's essentially what a deity you know, is. And so now I'm going to deal with Kalunga and Ma'at. And so, you know, we're going to get into a linguistic analysis. And so as I mentioned prior to, the word that we pronounce as Ma'at was not Ma'at in the Old and Middle Kingdom. These, it's, it's a four consonant word, M-R, K, or H, and this R is not like our regular English R. It is a nasalized of Vular trio. Um, and so it's kind of a throaty and nasalized sound, which I cannot reproduce, uh, you know, at this time. And so, um, and in many respects, we can also say that this is ng, and I demonstrate that in the, in the text of Lucha Volume 2. And so, but for right now, we'll just say K. And so the, the word ma'at, just like lunga and kalunga, is actually several different words that have kind of been synthesized and personified as the goddess ma'at. But ma'at, the word itself, not the personification, can mean truth, justice, straightness, balance, and order, as well as a, a, a few other things. And we'll get into that. So what I'm essentially arguing here, again, 
is that Kalunga and Ma'at are the same deity. And the words are cognate. They just have different prefixes and suffixes to the root. And if y'all don't mind me taking a sip of water real quick. Okay, I'm back. So now, <laughs> the word ma'at can also mean orderly management order and harmony. And again, I did a complete analysis of Ma'at in Eluja Volume 2 in the first chapter. And in the Basa language, the cognate for it is Ibag or Imbag. And, you know, you'll learn more in that chapter. But, you know, this one word for the cognate in the Basa Bantu language in Cameroon is structuring, arranging, ordering, grouping together harmoniously, order and structure. So when you think about, you know, ma'at, you, you think about, you know, order, harmony, and the arranging and structuring. And, and so that's, that's also creating, you know, manifesting. So remember that in the, in the vast majority of African systems, the, the universe is not created out of nothing. There's always a primordial something in existence, just as we saw in the Congo tradition and in the ancient Egyptian tradition, it was the nun or the new. And as I discuss in some, some other texts and other conversations I have online, the new is cognate with Mbongi that we, we, we mentioned earlier. And so the, the Egyptian cosmology and creation is the exact same as what you find in Congo. Um, but we don't have time to go into every single detail. And that, that is coming in a future text. And so uh, Tobin 1989 in regarding Ma'at states that Ma'at was thus more than only the principle of universal order. It was an integral part, an inseparable aspect of the cosmos without which the cosmos would not have existed. And so this, this fundamental ontological aspect of Ma'at Essentially, what I argue here is that Ma'at is the universe. It's matter and it's, it, you know, the, the, the matter of physical point, um, component as well as the accompanying laws. Therefore, it is God in the Bakanda, in the Bakanda context, or the African context. And so, and we, we'll see how this is the case. So we got to remember that you know, for, for Europeans, when they look into African systems of, uh, of spirituality, not understanding the Bukanda way of teaching, in other words, their pedagogy, they'll see a number of names for deities and believe that these are separate deities and not understanding that Ma'at is Ra, and Ra is Atom, and Atom is a moon, et cetera. It, it, it's one deity in different names for the same uh, fundamental principles and things. And so the same deity itself. And so when, when we talk about the universe, the universe is Ma'at. And so we'll, we'll get into the proof of that later. And so... You know, this is a citation from the coffin text. And it says, the waters said to Atom, kiss your daughter Ma'at, place her at your nose and your heart will live for she is not far from you. Ma'at is your daughter with your son Shu, whose name is life. It is from your daughter Ma'at, you shall take nourishment. It is your son Shu who will lift you up. And so they're, they're telling you something here, that Shu being life and Ma'at, you know, being a, 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 a wide variety of things, but that when it says here, it is, you, it is from your daughter, Ma'at, you shall take nourishment. In other words, when you eat food, food is that which empowers you. It allows you to do stuff. And so, this this nourishment 
that you know that that is being talked about metaphysically here is is the empowering agent in other words ma'at are the forces of nature that will sustain the creation here and so um, we'll see in in other aspects how atom and ma'at are the same deity because remember atom is a word that means complete and perfect and so um, in, in an upcoming text, I'll show you how Atom is also a cognate for the word Kalunga. And so linguistics is an indispensable tool to have when you're doing uh, systematic analyses of, of you know, African traditions. And so this is a, a kind of a statue base is that is also called Ma'at. So you'll see Ma'at sometimes on this, or you'll see this as a representation in, in the hieroglyphs for the word Ma'at, but it's a pedestal, it's a base. And so just as what we saw, you know, here where Ma'at will be your nourishment and things, it's just a kind of a, a metaphoric way of saying that these forces, it is, is what will be used to empower and, and make things happen in the universe. And so Ma'at is the base, the pedestal. It is the foundation from which everything emerges. And so it's from these forces, it's from the Kalunga, Ma'at, that these things, you know, are, are able to be in the universe itself. And so <laughs> we're now going to deal with the Egyptian and Kikongo sound correspondences. So when, when we make these kind of arguments that Kalunga and Ma'at are the same deity in the same word, we just can't say it. We have to demonstrate it. Demonstration beats conversation. And this is, this is how we roll here. And so the word Kemet in the Chiluba Bantu language of the Democratic Republic of Congo is called Chikam. And so I usually call, you know, the Egyptian language Chikam. So Chikam and Kikongo. And even this word Chikam and, and, and Kikongo, they're, they're the exact same word. And so in the etymology of the word Kemet in Illusion Volume 2, uh, I, I demonstrate how that is the case. So let's look at this first series of correspondences here. <laughs> so what you're looking at here is three columns. And the first column is Chikam or the Egyptian language. And the second column is the Kikongo language, uh, the language of Dr. Fukiao in the book Congo People. And the sound correspondences between the two languages. So you'll notice that in the columns here that the words are bolded and highlighted in different colors. And so this blue, the M in the blue right here is the prefix. So I'm, I'm showing that this is a prefix and that this prefix corresponds to this prefix in the Kikongo language. And the, the bolded in red are the two consonants in sequence in the Egyptian language corresponds to the, the consonants in sequence in the Kikongo language over here in the center column. And so you, you will see in the correspondence in section that the, uh, the Chikam or Egyptian M corresponds to the Kikongo N and the Egyptian, this which is the, that special type of R that I talked about earlier, the nasalized Vular trio is cognate with the L, the lateral L sound in Kikongo, and that this uh, ion symbol here is cognate with the ng consonant sequence, the nasalized velar, voice velar, um, ng, in like in sing, like the ending of the word sing. And so that's what corresponds. So that's how you read this on the right hand corner. So now let's let's go back up here. So we have marak. Uh, the word for eyebrow and the word for plume, which is a feather. And as I discuss in the text, that the word for feather in the African languages in Chin and Intu 
the language family is a word for hair. And so for, for the African, you know, the word for feather is just a word for hair. So the feathers are the hair of birds in the uh, in these African languages, in these China and two languages. And so you see that it corresponds to Nlinge, hair in Kikongo. And so we have the word marach, marach, salt water, or just water in general. And then remember that word I mentioned earlier, langu, water. And you can say kalunga in the same word for ocean. Then we have this combination, hat. Arichat, Marahu, Marahwe, right line. And then in Kikongo, you have in longa, line, row, file, a swarm of driver ants on the march, a troop, swarm, train of people filing along. And so remember that word in longa is the word for line that emerged in the Mbongi that separated the the upper world from the lower world or the 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 world of physical matter from the quantum and spiritual world down below as far as the graphic is concerned so we see that it is cognitive again because remember that ma'at also means straightness you know a line so we have you know marech or ma meaning real true right just fair correct proper then you have the word lunga to be accurate, right, be exact, perfect, etc. So remember that the word perfect is, is a synonym for the word complete. So when you say kalunga, the completely complete being, it is, uh, this is the cognate for ma, meaning real, true, right, just, fair, correct, proper, as well as, you know, accurate, uh, right, be exact, perfect, complete, etc. And then we have this variation here, marahwe, and it means to extend limbs, to steer, to paddle, to set out. And then we have luaka, it's not nasalized, so it's just a strong K, reach, to arrive at, to reach, to uh, reach, get to, come to, extend to. And then we have this word here, means lead, guide, direct, send, dispatch, throw out, and then longa, to instruct, teach, exhort, counsel, Reprove, advise, admonish, educate, train. And so this is usually done in an in Egyptian sense to steer boats. But in terms of teaching, you know, here it, it, this, this word is used in a, in a sense to, um, um, to, to guide people in terms of their, their thought process and education. And so that's what it means to teach, to guide, to, to raise up, to impart information. And so we'll, we'll continue. So, you know, a few examples is not good enough. And so we, we got to show that this is a this this is not an accident, that these are non accidental sound meaning correspondences that we're seeing here. So we have um, ma or mare to present, offer, make a presentation. Then we have lukau, gift, donation, offering, present, divided. And then we have merchait, bark of the sun, temple, ma'at bark. Then you have lungu, canoe. And in the Kitundu dialect, lungu, canoe. And in the Kimbundu language of Angola, malungu. So, you know, we can, we can argue that the Kimbundi is closer to the Egyptian variation with malungu in terms of great canoe watercraft. And then we have Mahi or Mahi to start to slaughter. And then we have Lueka to make a wound. And you know Marahu or Mahahua wood, board or plank. And then we have Longwa, a tree yielding very good timber for planks. And then we have Marahu, again, wind, breeze, favorable wind. And then you have Lunga, a strong wind, as we saw earlier. And so you'll see that the Kikongo provides a greater context and, and helps us into, you know, even the vocal, the proper vocalization of what how we pronounce it as Ma'at. And so, you know, we have this variation, you know, Ma'atiri, 
righteous one, and it's in Lekha, a person who is Gentile, civilized, weak, humble, a tame animal. And there's, through another linguistic process, another variation of this of this root that is also cognate with Ma is in Songi, a just man, an upright man, and in Songi, upright and just. And then, of course, the, the word, which we say Ma'at, truth, right doing, righteousness, justice, rightness, orderly management, is in Lungu justification, the state of being just, justice, righteousness, blamelessness, completeness. Again, lunga, when, when lunga is, when you see a, a Kikongo word, the verbs end in a, but the, the vowel, excuse me, the, um, the nouns end in you, uh, and often e, I may believe, but, you know, in this case, it's kind of double because you have this prefix of agent. Uh, here. And so the N and, and the U makes this a vowel, but the root is kind of lunga, as we saw earlier. And so in lungu is the cognate for ma'at, truth, justice, rights, reciprocity, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, we have more than demonstrated here that the word lunga and kalunga is cognate with the root in the word ma'at. And so we can view them as the same. They are essentially the same. And so in an upcoming text, and I discuss a little bit of this in the Luja volume two, but I'm reserving the bulk of the argument on a text that I'm focusing on dealing with the goddess ma'at in ancient Egypt and its relationship or in its presence in relationship to the Bakongo excuse me, not just the Bakongo people, the, the Bantu speakers of Central, East, and South Africa. And so the word ma'at is also a variation of what we call ra, in that you'll see the, the cognizance for ma'at and ra um, in these variations in Bantu languages, kalunga, karunga, mulungu, murungu, kalanga, itongo, katanga, intangu, ilanga, etc. And so that is an upcoming discussion, you know, for the near future. And this is the end of part one. So uh, in the description will be a link for part two. And, you know, we'll get into the now the meat of it all and, and show how all of this data synthesizes to become the principle of Kimoyo in the art that, that defines the African religious system. So that was just more of the science and the details and the explanation of the cosmology. And now we're gonna see, we're gonna get deep into the philosophy of it all and how all and everything connects. And so we'll, we're now gonna deal with in part two um, defining in the elements of Kalunga itself and, um, and some other things. And so uh, we'll be back in just a moment.